Hello, friends and goats of the Command Valley podcast. My name is Griffin, and today we're bringing you another deck tech from the Double Masters reprint bonanza. This deck tech is brought to you by Peter, who wrote this deck and built this deck, and I'm just going to be presenting it for him today. This deck will be the deck that Peter will be playing on the next episode of Duel of the Peaks Double Masters Edition, so look forward to seeing this deck in action. So what deck, you might be asking? Well, you probably aren't because you saw the title for this video, and that commander is Atraxa Praetor's Voice. Before I begin, just wanted to give a quick shout out to this channel sponsor, Game Grid Lehigh. If you are in the Utah County area, please check them out. We appreciate their support and invite you to support them. Also, if you like our content and you enjoy this video, be sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel to see all of our future deck techs, gameplay videos, and podcast episodes. And last of all, in the coming week, we are going to be releasing our Patreon. We have a lot of exciting content and special things to give out to you guys for supporting us. So if you're looking for extra ways to support us, then please stay tuned for that Patreon release that will be coming out in the next week or two. All right, let's jump into it. Now, Atraxa is one of the most popular commanders out there, and the reason for that is Atraxa has a lot of different ways that you can build her. I've seen Atraxa decks that vary from Infect to just plus one, plus one counter synergies to minus one counter synergies to super friends. And Peter has built a super friends version of Atraxa. So let's go ahead and read her first. Atraxa Praetor's Voice is green, white, blue, black for a 4-4 legendary creature angel horror. She has Flying, Vigilance, Death Touch, and Lifelink, and at the beginning of your end step, Proliferate. Which means, choose any number of permanents and or players, then give each another counter of each kind already there. So when you have Planeswalkers out and you have an Atrax out, you can use their abilities because they have loyalty counters on them, and that at your end step, Atraxa will be able to give them another loyalty counter. Now the way that Peter has built this deck is that he's actually built this to work pretty well without Atraxa, so you don't have to worry about needing Atrax out in order for you to be able to get a lot of value off of your planeswalkers. There's going to be four categories in this deck. The first one is going to be planeswalkers. The next is interaction, ramp, and then our planeswalker synergies. And we'll just jump right into it. For the planeswalkers, I will not be reading every planeswalker. I'm just going to be talking about the reason that Peter has put these in this deck and the reason that he puts behind why they are in certain categories. So let's jump in. Planeswalkers. The first category of planeswalkers that we have is our interaction planeswalkers. Now this doesn't mean necessarily that they all are just for interaction, just that their purpose is mainly for the interaction, even if they have other abilities as well. So first up, we've got Ashiok Dream Render. She has the ability to be able to mill your opponents and exile their graveyard, which can be very helpful graveyard hate for those decks that reoccur things from their graveyards like Muldrotha, Marin, Carador, and the list goes on. But it also stops your opponents from searching their libraries, which is actually extremely useful. No more tutors, no more solemn simulacrums, no more fetch lands, very hateful card, and very flavorfully on theme for Ashiok. Next up, we've got Narset, Parter of Veils. If you didn't think Ashok was bad enough, we've got a Planeswalker that can stop people from drawing extra cards. So a Notion Thief effect on a Planeswalker, but you can also minus her to be able to get some card selections, grab some non-creature, non-land cards from the top four of your deck. Next up, we've got Oko, Thief of Crowns, and his ability is to be able to turn things into elks or steal creatures from your opponents, whether you want to steal their commanders or their big pieces on their board. Very efficient at taking them out. Teferi, Time Raveler, one of my personal favorites. Stop your opponents from casting spells at instant speed. He can also be used to bounce things, give you some card draw. Also can make your sorceries be able to be cast at instant speed. Ajani Steadfast, his ultimate will protect your planeswalkers for the rest of the game, but can also pump other planeswalkers and creatures that you have. Next up, we've got Jason Reveler of Secrets that can give you some card selection, can bounce some creatures, and also has a super powerful Areo Suratami Ascendance effect, which essentially counters the first spell played by each opponent each turn. To display how powerful that effect is, Areo is banned in Commander, so ulting this Planeswalker will just spell doom for your opponents. Next up, we have Tamio, our favorite Moon Sage, who can dap down permanents, draw some cards, and her ultimate will protect anything from going to the Giver, just putting back into our hand. So ult your Planeswalkers, even if it kills them, because they'll just go right back to your hand. Vraska the Unseen, very efficient removal, and can win the game in certain conditions with those 1-1 assassins that make a player lose the game, but it does depend on whether your opponents have creatures or not, so if you have a board wipe and then you ult, oh buddy. Lastly, we've got Soren Markov. Everybody hates the Soren Markov, but if you can get this Soren Markov down on the table, you can bring your one of your opponent's life totals down to 10, which essentially spells the end of the game for them. Also can direct damage away from you to get to Soren because nobody wants you to do that twice. So our second category in our planeswalkers are the 
card advantage and card value sections. Peter notes that these ones are the most important ones to protect as these are going to be the ones that help us get our key pieces and our powerful combos. A Johnny the Great Hearted, which is essentially just here to be able to put loyalty counters on our other planeswalkers. Narset Transcendent, which can give you some card selection give you some extra benefits from your instants and sorceries, and her ultimate is brutal, stopping your opponents from playing non-creature spells. Teferi Master of Time is another one of my favorite planeswalkers. Looting on everyone else's turn is amazing, but you can also pseudo remove creatures by phasing them out, and his ultimate is taking two extra turns, which if you have even one or two planeswalkers out on the battlefield, that is a mess to deal with. A Johnny Mentor of Heroes that can put some plus one plus one counters on your creatures, bring an aura creature or planeswalker card from the top four of your library into your hand, and he also has a minus eight that can gain you 100 life if you're in a pinch or if you just want to, because why not? Liliana Dreadhorde General, our favorite planeswalker between teferi and liliana i'm not sure you know i'm i, I do have a really tough time with this because the thing is flavorfully okay here here i will announce this right now everyone and i i will keep to this for the rest of my life teferi is my favorite flavorful planeswalker it's a favorite style of play of mine doing control and blue and white shenanigans but liliana is my favorite planeswalker in general she has the most wonderful story, so much character development, and just, Lily, if you're out there, Jace will forgive you. You can take Vrask out of the picture. Anyways, Liliana Dreadhor General. Some brutal card draw that's stacked right onto her. She can also make some tokens. Make your opponent sacrifice creatures, which is great when you're not casting very many creatures. And her ultimate is terrifying and will almost always secure you the win. Teferi, Temporal Archmage, which can give you some card selection, can untap four target permanents, and his ultimate lets you activate loyalty abilities on anyone's turn, which means you can activate it four times per rotation. Last up in our category of Planeswalkers is ones that will help win you the game. Now, all of the Planeswalkers that we've talked about have powerful ultimates that will, in most cases, spell the end of the game for your opponents or a win for you, but these ones are specifically designed to get to their ultimate, and that's what their focus is on. So first up, we have Tamio Field Researcher, whose ultimate is an Omniscience that cannot be interacted with, and almost any time anybody casts an Omniscience, you know that that is the end of the game. Liliana Vest that we put into this category because she can tutor other win cons that we have, specifically like something like a doubling season, which we'll get to in a bit. Elspeth, Sun's Champion, can wipe the board and make a lot of tokens, but the ultimate will pump all of your creatures, including Atraxa as well. So if you're looking, if you're making a lot of creatures and that is the route that you want to go, then she can be a very effective to get through. Vraska Relic Seeker can bring an opponent down to one life, and then it's only a matter of pinging them with one of your other Planeswalkers or getting a creature to swing at them. It can also help that your opponents can also swing at them if you need to deal with a arch enemy situation. Eugene the Spirit Dragon, one of the most effective board wipes, but his ultimate provides so much value that it's hard to pass up the chance to use it. Now I'll go ahead and put in our other non- Planeswalker win conditions here. We just have three. The first one is a Torment of Hellfire. It's it's very simply a good mana sink in case you end up getting a ton of mana from one of your big mana rocks or something else. Kind of a backup win con, but can be very effective later in the game. Eerie Ultimatum is crazy good late game. If you can, if your opponents are just taking out your Planeswalkers one by one and you cast an Eerie Ultimatum, get them all back at the same time, it is almost impossible for your opponents to be able to catch up at that point. And then the last is going to be Doubling Season and Idyllic Tutor. So Idyllic Tutor is only in here to find Doubling Season, and obviously Doubling Season is the most effective card in any Super Friends deck. Many Planeswalkers can just ultimate if Doubling Season is on the battlefield. However, it is expensive if you cannot afford a Doubling Season. Pure Imaginative Rascal works, but only adds one additional counter when they enter the battlefield, which is less of a win con, more of a value piece. So those are the Planeswalkers that we have in this deck. All of these have a purpose to them, so remember that when you are casting these Planeswalkers. Now let's go ahead and move on to our non-Planeswalker interaction. Of course, we've got some counter spells in this deck. Peter has added Swan Song, Arcane Denial, Counter Spell, Fierce Guardianship, which can be really good if Traxxas is on the battlefield, and Fuel for the Cause, which is a counter spell that also proliferates. And I'll get into proliferation in a second. As far as straight removal goes, we've got Assassin's Trophy and Beast Within, which can take out any permanence. And our board wipes, we've got Merciless Eviction, Dune Blast, and Supreme Verdict. In Super Friends decks, board wipes are almost essential. You need to be able to protect your Planeswalkers. So finding those board wipes that will only take out creatures or give you some flexibility are auto-includes. Moving on to our ramp, we've got Astral Cornucopia, Empowered Auto Generator, and Crystalline Crawler. They are 
really good to have out with Atraxa because Atraxa can proliferate the counters on these to add us more mana and are also just good ramp pieces in general. Chromatic Lantern and Dryad of the Elysian Grove can give you some mana fixing and get you some extra lands onto the battlefield. Silvering and Arcane Signet, the classics. We've got Fabrer Elder, which is a very effective mana creature that if we have Atraxa out can tap for four mana. And then last up, we've got Smothering Tithe, Cultivate, and Farseek. Moving on to our Planeswalker Synergy, we have a lot of cards in this deck that can help us with our Planeswalkers, whether they help us add counters or they help us get Planeswalkers onto the battlefield and are very effective in this deck. First up, we've got the Clathic Chain Veil and Oath of Teferi that get more activations off of your Planeswalkers, so you can activate them more than once per turn. Oath of Nyssa, which can give you mana fixing for your Planeswalkers. Oath of Ajani, which gives you reduction on your Planeswalkers. Oath of Jace, that can give you some card advantage and Oath of Kai that gives you a little bit of protection. We also have in here Spark Double, which is just an amazing card that doubles any Planeswalker on the battlefield to get double the effects. Ignite the Beacon and Call the Gatewatch are two cards that can tutor up Planeswalkers for us, which are extremely useful depending on the types of decks we're playing against, depending how the board state looks, it's very useful to have those tutors in here. Deploy the Gatewatch, super fun card that can get two Planeswalkers off the top of your deck onto the battlefield if you are lucky. And then last up, we've got Proliferate specific cards. Obviously we have a Trax in this deck that proliferates herself, but we also want some redundancy in our deck to be able to proliferate our Planeswalker loyalty counters. Of course, we have Doubling Season, as discussed before, essential win con for this deck, which I will add if you have a Trax out and a Doubling Season out, every time that you add a counter from your proliferation, you're gonna get double them from Doubling Season, which includes our Planeswalker loyalty counters. We'll also add that activating loyalty abilities for Planeswalkers does not double the counters from Doubling Season because adding and removing counters is a cost of loyalty abilities and not an effect. And Doubling Season specifically says that if an effect would put counters. We've got Evolution Sage and Flux Channeler, which are extremely good proliferate triggered abilities. Evolution Sage that triggers off of lands. And Flux Channeler, which can proliferate off of our non-creature spells, which all of our Planeswalkers are non-creature spells. So just proliferate every time you cast a Planeswalker. Shalai Voice of Plenty can give us protection for us and our Planeswalkers, and can also give protection for Atraxa. Deep Glow Skate, which is a big whale that doubles counters on everything that we choose on the board, which can essentially ultimate a Planeswalker when this comes out. Extremely useful. That's about it for all the non-land cards in the deck. Before I finish, I'm going to go over the lands in this deck, we'll make it really quick. The most noteworthy lands in this deck are Opal Palace, which can give Intrax a plus one, plus one counter when she comes in so she can proliferate herself. Dreadship Reef, an all-star land in the deck, can put counters and proliferate, and it can still produce mana if it is tapped if you have other lands open. Interplanar Beacon is synergistic with Planeswalkers. Pseudo Mana Fixing can also gain you some life. And Karn's Bastion, which is an all-star card for four mana and tap it, you can proliferate. Having proliferate on a land that's very hard to interact with can just be sometimes too much for your opponents to catch up with. For the rest of the lands, please check out our deck list in the show notes below. Peter has added in a full mana base for you guys to go check out. And with that, that is all for our Atraxa Praetor's Voice deck tech. Shoutouts to Peter for creating this deck. I will say this deck is very powerful, and Super Friends can sometimes just be a very hard strategy to deal with. If you have any questions or comments about this deck, please comment below this video. We will try our best to respond, and we appreciate everyone who gives us input and advice on our deck techs. Overall, we just really appreciate all of you guys. Another reminder, if you like our content, please remember to like and subscribe and check out our channel for all of our other awesome EDH content made specifically for you. That's right, you there. You there sitting in your seat watching your phone slash laptop. We did this for you. All right, and with that, we will see you guys next time.